Let me tell you what a narcissist is. Let me tell you what a toxic person is. These are worlds within worlds within worlds. And we're not even contemplating how many of these concepts violate principles of the Quran. The study of outside of our deen, what, you know, lately we started calling it religious education, secular education. We separated these two, right? There's religious education and there's secular education. This is a new definition. This did not exist in our religion. In fact, our religion told us, Siru fil ard, fanduru kayfa bada al khalq. Go, travel in the world. Find out, figure out, contemplate how did creation begin? How did they learn about the fossils? Learn about the ruins. Find these skeletal structures. Go, find out how creation began. Fanduru kayfa bada al khalq. This is Allah Azza wa Jal telling the believer not to close their eyes and you know, keep the outside world outside because it will ruin your faith. You know, other religions, I don't have to name any of them, but other religions, they would basically tell people, don't learn anything from the outside, it will corrupt your faith. It will make you start having doubts. If you want to preserve your faith, stay within this protected circle, only listen to these, these people, and if you listen to them, you will, your iman will be protected. The devil will not get to you. But the Qur'an came and it acknowledged that Allah gave the human being such a powerful, a more powerful tool than anything else. The human mind, the human heart, the soul. And it's supposed to arrive at the truth by engaging with exploration. And the more you explore, not you become more doubtful, the more you explore, the more convinced you become. It's the opposite. We were supposed to be a people of exploration. That's what we were supposed to be. But there's a dark side to exploration. Science can be a spiritual experience, it can be. I've met people that have studied philosophy and history and that became a spiritual experience that led them back to Islam, it can be. But science, let's take science for an example, science by itself is blind. Science has no conscience. Science is not about good or evil, it's just observation. When somebody is studying chemistry, there are not salih chemicals and you know, Facet chemicals, they're just chemicals. When you're somebody studying physics, it's just physical, physical formulae. It's just quantum mechanics. It's just, you know, these are just phenomena. You're observing reality. But people have a conscience. So if you, let's remove God and remove spirituality and remove guidance from the equation and just look at science for a moment. If somebody looks at science without any tadabur, not looking at it, as an, at, as an, uh, uh, at it as an ayah that leads to something bigger. If you look at it that way, then it's very easy to say that we can use science for very evil purposes too. It's the same science that creates nuclear weapons. It's the same science that creates chemical weapons. It's the same science that creates addictive drugs that thousands of people are addicted to around the world, aren't, isn't it? It's also a product of science. It's the same science that creates weapons that kill people. It's the same science that creates, you know, uh, carcinogens. It's the same science that people use to produce, manufacture synthetic food that they know can cause all kinds of health issues, but it makes them a lot of money. It's scientists that are doing a lot of scientific study to produce what's being produced. And science is all around us. The Quran is simply telling us something. It's telling us that when you look at the, if you study and explore science, but you are seeking purpose, then you will find it. But if you remove purpose from the equation, then you can turn that into anything. And in fact, that's even true of the Quran. Wild enough. If somebody comes to the Quran and they are not seeking purpose, they're, not, they're just curious, but they're not seeking purpose. They can very well find misguidance from this book. Allah himself says, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ Even the Qur'an, you cannot get guidance from it if you don't come with the right mindset. I know very, very well-educated professors, PhDs, in the study of the Qur'an that are non-Muslim. I know them. They've been studying the Qur'an for 25, 30 years. They know more Qur'an than most Muslims. They know more Arabic and more classical tafsir than, than most Muslims, but they're not Muslim. They'll go to a conference, they'll discuss su a surah for five hours and discuss every ayah and discuss the mufassirun and then their lunch break, they're gonna go have a champagne. That's, that's normal for them. 
because they don't come to the Quran for guidance. The same way, you don't, you don't have to study the science or study science for purpose. The same way, that even applies to the word of Allah. But I wanted to turn this conversation briefly towards something else. I wanted to turn it towards a new science that took hold of the world in the last 100 to 150 years, and that's the science of psychology. Before psychology, when a human being experienced difficulty emotionally, they went through a tough experience, or they wanted to overcome their sadness and their grief, for example, right? They would turn towards religion before psychology, or they would turn towards philosophy, because philosophy asked the question, what is pain? Why is there suffering in the world? What is this world all about, right? Philosophers try to answer this question. So it doesn't matter what religion, people turn towards religion to answer their questions of the things that were troubling them in their heart. But then philosophy and even the spiritual study of psychology, spirituality, they basically got replaced slowly with this new thing we now call psychology. And a psychology is an attempt to understand ourselves, understand our deepest thoughts, understand our subconscious, understand our emotions, understand other people's behavior, our own behavior, right? You people go to a therapist and say, why do I get so angry all the time? Why can't I stop crying? You know, why do people treat me this way, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, I'm a student of psychology myself, and I can tell you, it's a very elaborate science. It's an exhaustive study. There are, it's not just one subject. It's actually multiple departments, social psychology, personality psychology, abnormal psychology. People have dedicated entire academic careers to exploring more and more areas of psychology. All of it, by the way, is connected to something in the Quran. Allah said, Sadurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusin. They'll, we'll show them our ayat inside themselves. And what is psychology doing? It's an exploration of the self. That's what it is but it removes, fundamentally removes God from the equation. Now the, per the, you know, like I said, science without purpose can give you chemical weapons, can give you addictive drugs. Psychology with the removal of purpose, removal of Allah from the equation, what does it give you? Something has to be there that is the ultimate truth. And for what, hap what happened in the world of psychology, and what's even crazier is not just in the academic psychology, because of social media, something else happened before I get to my observations. And that is that in any subject, let's say physics, any subject, let's say mechanics, there are people that actually know mechanics, they actually know physics, and those are professors and PhDs and researchers, but they don't have a YouTube page. But there's an 18-year-old who's read a couple of books on it, and he's got a 5 million followers on his YouTube page, and he's a much more popular Co you know, content producer on physics, even though some of his physics is a joke. If academics actually looked at his work, they'd say, what is this? But he's got more followers because now you can present content in a more interesting way, even if it's not well researched and it will sound convincing, right? So what happened with the world of psychology? There is PhDs and research and analysis and books. And then there are people who come up with their own content and they'll come up and say, let me tell you what a narcissist is. Let me tell you what a toxic person is. Let me tell you how to draw boundaries. Let me tell you if this, let me tell you about trauma. And you've got these people that just became self-diagnosing. And now these terms became popular among even the Muslim community. Now you have a young man saying, you know, my father's so toxic. He's always gaslighting me. I need to draw some boundaries between myself and my dad because he's really getting in my, my emotional space and I need some healing and I need to have some self-care. So what used to be arrogance can now be called self-care. What used to be bad akhlaq can now be called drawing a boundary. What used to, <laughs> you know, what used to be telling, you know, somebody's telling you a harsh truth. <laughs> Meaning you're telling somebody a truth that maybe they don't want to hear, but you need, they need to hear it. You say, this is, t this is gaslighting. I'm being gaslit. So now what we do is we take psychology and we actually undermine some of the most important experiences in our lives because the biggest, the ultimate thing is I need to feel good. Anything that gets in the way of me feeling good is bad for my psychology. So the, the ultimate goal is to keep yourself happy. 
anything gets in that way, it's toxic. It's narcissistic. It's, this person is narcissistic. They're not drawing the right boundary. I'm being triggered. You're being triggered. What does the Quran say about that? What, what happens when you have an... And by the way, I'm not dismissing somebody having a traumatic experience. I don't dismiss that there's such a thing as narcissism. These things exist. What I'm saying is we have turned them into weaponized terms. We don't even understand them ourselves. And it's actually starting to impact the way we think about our own religion. Our, our, our cha we're not even contemplating how many of these concepts violate principles of the Quran. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Quran in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Quran in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayan is to make deeper study of the Quran accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Quran for this surah and many other surahs on BayanaTV.com under the deeper look section.